This is the new Mazda CX-50 Turbo Meridian Edition. Mazda's rugged compact SUV that thinks it's a Subaru Outback. But can this off-road themed SUV actually beat Subaru at their own game? Today we'll take this CX-50 on a road trip, venture onto some dirt, and see if it can conquer some trails. It seems like just about every automaker is trying to be Subaru nowadays. Off-road theme packages on SUVs are really big right now. Honda has their Trail Sport line, click above to check out my review of the Passport Trail Sport, Nissan has Rock Creek, and even Subaru has upped their game with their Wilderness line. Click above to check out my Crosstrek Wilderness review. And now one of the most unlikely brands to join this off-road party has decided that they can no longer avoid getting dirty. Mazda has historically been been all about building cars that have the soul of a quote sports car and designing beautiful exteriors that look like they're too fancy and high class to ever touch a dirt road. But Mazda must have seen some dollar signs in this dirt because they jumped right in with a CX-50 Turbo Meridian Edition. This trim is a nearly three grand jump up from the turbo trim. We won't go into all eight of the CX-50 trims, but they start at around 30K for the S Select and head well into the 40s as you go up the trim levels. And this Turbo Meridian Edition is marketed squarely at the crowd that envisions that they'll take their kayaks to the lake or they'll go camping in some national parks. Whether they do that or not is something that I won't answer today, a lot of people buy into the marketing of these off-road packages, but rarely leave their suburban subdivision. But the question is, could you tackle some dirt? All right, so what do we get as part of this package? We've got this cool matte black sticker on the hood, okay. Silver accents on the rocker panels, check. Ooh, special colors. You can get either polymetal gray metallic or zircon sand metallic, which we have here. Okay, excellent looking paint, check. And we got fancy terracotta leather seats. Okay, not really off-road specific, but they look really nice, check. Is there a skid plate? Uh, nope. Is there a different suspension over the other CX-50s? Uh, nope. Is the all-wheel drive system any different? Again, no, but that doesn't really matter. Mazda's all-wheel drive system is already quite good. Approach and departure angles seem to be about the same as the base CX-50. So is there a lift? Uh, nope, but it does have acceptable ground clearance at 8.5 inches, but for some reason this Turbo Meridian Edition sits one-tenth of an inch lower than the Turbo. Okay, here we go. We've got these unique 18-inch wheels wrapped in Falcon all-terrain tires. That's a good upgrade. So yeah, most of what we have here is visual bling. And this vehicle does look pretty rad. But we shouldn't discount the value of a good set of all-terrain tires with a decent amount of sidewall. They're one of the most important elements of an off-road package. So we'll put all of this to the test when we hit some dirt later in this video. And you might notice a few other goodies here. This CX-50 is outfitted with the Apex package, coming in at about $1,200, and that includes splash guards and this super rugged looking roof rack. So what do you think of this exterior design? Yes, it's yet another compact SUV, but I think this one looks fantastic. It has the essence of those elegant Mazda designs that came before it, but adds a few muscles and bulges here and there. It's got a pretty low roof line that makes it seem like it's sitting low to the ground, but it still has decent ground clearance. I really like this simple blacked out grill, but it does look kind of funny from the side. Look at that kind of ungainly bulge from the side there. It doesn't look bad, but it's just a little odd. The rear fender flares are pretty wide, which gives it a very aggressive appearance. In general, I really like how this looks. I think my only complaint are these kind of dumb looking fake vents right here. That's it. Oh, and look, actual exhaust tips. They're not fake. That's kind of nice. All right, let's check out the interior. So once you're inside, you're greeted with an excellently crafted cabin. It's luxurious, it looks really nice, the fit and finish is great. Mazda is really good at this. It looks simple, and I mean that in a good way. There's not giant screens everywhere, there are actual physical controls for things, and those controls are very simple and minimal. Very nice soft touch materials on the doors and the dashboard with this cool cross stitch pattern. The seats are adorned in very nice looking terracotta leather, again with cross stitching and some black accents. And I really like these seats, they're very comfortable. It's very easy to get a good comfortable driving position. I'm six foot three, decent amount of headroom, a lot of leg room. However, like some other Mazdas that I've driven, the width of the driving area is pretty narrow. 
I hit my knee on the center console quite frequently. Both driver and passenger seats are power adjustable and they are heated, but they are not ventilated. And right in front of us, we've got a steering wheel that looks like it was lifted right out of a Miata. It's definitely got a sporty feel and character. And behind that steering wheel, we have analog gauges on the left and the right for the tachometer, temperature and fuel but in the center is actually a digital display. And obviously you can change the information that's displayed there. And when you switch it to the speedometer, you can barely tell that that's not an analog gauge. It looks pretty good. I really like the very clean design for the dashboard. It's very simple. I like these very minimal aluminum accents. And right in the center there is the 10 and a quarter inch infotainment screen. And like other Mazda products, no, this is not a touch screen when you're on the Mazda menu. Plus it's set a little bit too far back for that anyway. If you were seat belted in, you probably couldn't even reach it. And that's by design. Mazda doesn't really want you touching the screen. They feel like it's a lot safer for you to use these controls down here. Now, I know a lot of people complain about this system, but I actually love it. Once you get used to the controls and you start to remember where everything is in the menus, I find it actually easier to use than a touch screen. And you do have Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. And yes, you can touch the screen for Apple CarPlay, but it is a little bit far away. Mazda really wants you to use their scroll wheel for this too. And one nice thing is that this CarPlay can be used wirelessly. All right, moving down to the HVAC controls, yet another system in this car that I love. It's a really great and simple design. Systems like this are underrated. Being able to adjust this by feel without taking your eyes off the road. I'm glad that Mazda thinks that this is important because it is. All right, moving on down here, you've got a rubberized tray right there. So you can put stuff in there without it sliding around. Decent sized cup holder for a water bottle or your kid's toys. Down here, you've got a very traditional physical gear selector and you can also slide it over here for manual control of your gears. And of course, you've got a backup camera, which has got pretty decent resolution. Here's your My Drive button where you can select the different modes, normal, sport, and off-road. If you're looking around up here for a volume knob, you will not find one up here. They actually put it down here. This is where Mazda likes to put it. In the middle here, you've got a relatively small center console that has a split design, perfect for your kids' toys. And hiding under here are the USB jacks, USB-A, pretty reasonably sized door pockets for water bottles and your kids' toys. And then above us, we have this really amazing large panoramic sunroof. However, the view is pretty much blocked by that roof rack. Still nice to have though, let some light in. All right, let's check out the back seat. So back here, it's not the biggest. I wouldn't want to sit three adults back here, but you could probably fit two and not have too much of a problem. Headroom is okay. My head isn't touching the ceiling, but it's close. Legroom is okay. My front seat is set for myself. Although for as wide as this car is, it does feel a little bit narrow, but it's relatively comfortable back here. Amenities include two vents. You've got two USB ports here. We don't get soft touch materials back here, but that's all right. And as you can see, my daughter's car seat fits pretty well. And these latch anchors are very easy to get to. They have these little removable covers. Okay, in the back, we do have a power lift gate. And back here, we've got 31.4 cubic feet of cargo space behind those rear seats. Yeah, and that's plenty of space for most everything you need to do, but it's a bit below average for this compact SUV class. Right here, we do have handles that allow you to fold those seats down. And now we've got 56.3 cubic feet with those seats folded. And under here, you do have an actual spare tire, which is nice. A lot of new cars don't give you that. All right, when it comes to safety, Mazda's got a pretty good suite of safety tech here. Got things like lane keep assist, blind spot monitoring, rear cross traffic alert, adaptive cruise control with stop and go, all great things that will help us drive more safely. But when it comes to safety, we should also be concerned with things like the weight of a vehicle, the height of a vehicle, the size of the vehicle, how easy it is to see out of. And thankfully, this CX-50 Meridian package is pretty lightweight at just over 3,800 pounds. It's also not too terribly tall, which should make it slightly more pedestrian friendly than something like an S. Escalade. Certainly not as pedestrian friendly as something like a Mazda 3, but it's not that bad in terms of an SUV. Now, when it comes to outward visibility, yeah, we have kind of small windows on the side, but they're pretty easy to see out of. Same goes for the windshield, not super tall. It is a little bit hard to gauge where the front of your vehicle is because it's so long, but this vehicle sits a bit lower than some SUVs, so it's not terrible. Visibility out the side rear windows is pretty good. And this does have some pretty thick D pillars, but the view out of the back is not bad, at least by new SUV standards. All right, enough talking about this cabin. Let's go drive this thing. And first, we'll hit some pavement and then we'll try to find some dirt. Let's go. Ooh. 
Now the lower end CX50 is getting a naturally aspirated engine, but this turbo Meridian edition gets a 256 horsepower, 2.5 liter turbocharged engine. It makes 320 pound feet of torque. That's mated to a six speed automatic. You don't have any CVTs here, thankfully. Six speeds may not seem like enough gears nowadays, but it seems to do fine with just six. And everything is powering all four wheels using the same all wheel drive system found in the other CX50s. So right down here, we've got Mazda's My Drive switch, which gives you access to three different driving modes. You've got normal, sport, and off-road. And of course, on this beautiful canyon road just outside of Los Angeles, I'm in sport mode. Now you don't sacrifice much acceleration with this Meridian Edition. Zero to 60 occurs in just under seven seconds. I think it's like 6.7. It's only a tenth off the non-Meridian Edition, so it is decently quick. I'll slow down here a little bit and let's smash the throttle. It sounds pretty good. Yeah, the transmission isn't the quickest to shift, but it's fine. This is not a sports car. Not every car needs to be a sports car, but even so it is legitimately fun to drive, mainly because of how it handles. And because the main difference between this Turbo Meridian Edition and other CX-50s are the tires, there's really not that much difference in terms of how it rides and how it handles. Yeah, there's a touch more lean in the corners, but that's really it. Road noise doesn't even seem to be that much of an issue with these all-terrain tires. However, I will say, I don't think I'd be able to hear the road noise from the tires over the sound of this roof rack in the wind. Kind of loud, like really loud. So while it looks super awesome and it's probably incredibly useful, if I'm on a trip where I don't need it, I'd probably take it off and leave it in the garage. Yeah, honestly, if it weren't for that roof rack, this would probably be a pretty quiet cabin. Now Mazda is generally known for cars that handle really well. And yeah, this CX-50, we don't wanna run over that snake. Whew. <laughs> Speaking of handling, I just handily avoided that snake that was crossing the road. So yeah, this thing does handle really well. It can make quick maneuvers like that without an issue. And even with those all-terrain tires, I don't feel like I'm going to go careening off the edge of one of these cliffs. So yeah, it is a little bit strange to sort of have an off-road themed vehicle like this with the all-terrain tires and those fancy graphics, but still be able to handle pretty well on a back road. It is pretty fun to drive. And I think maybe that's what might make you choose this over something like a Subaru Outback or Subaru Outback Wilderness, is that it's definitely a lot more fun to drive. Gas mileage is just average. You get 23 city, 29 highway, and 25 combined. So with the proliferation of hybrids and plug-in hybrids, that kind of fuel economy doesn't really feel all that great. So while this vehicle is pretty fun on a canyon road like this, why don't we go see if we can find some dirt since that is kind of the marketing behind this car, right? It seems like the ads for this vehicle show Patagonia jacket wearing couples driving down dirt roads in search of solitude in some backcountry area. So let's go get the tires dirty. Okay, so we've arrived at one of my favorite places to hit some dirt, it's just outside of Los Angeles. Now these roads aren't terribly difficult and I'm not really planning on hitting anything all that difficult here today. Like I mentioned, we do have that 8.5 inches of ground clearance here, but no skid plate. And I don't really wanna make Mazda mad by scratching up this lovely CX-50. So I'll likely stick to roads like this, roads that you might likely encounter on your way to a campsite or in a national park. Now, as we talked about earlier, we don't really have much in the way of tangible upgrades here in terms of off-road ability, but we do have Mazda's excellent all-wheel drive system, which will certainly give us some advantages here in the dirt. And let's not forget about the main difference between this Meridian Edition and other CX-50s, these all-terrain tires. Tires play such an important role when you're off the pavement, and this set of rubber seems to be doing a great job, which is pretty commendable, considering that they're pretty decent tires on the pavement too. But it is a beautiful day out here. There's not a soul around. I've got an all-wheel drive vehicle that is pretty well suited to this road. I love doing stuff like this. Even if it's not a true off-roader, it's still fun. Just be a little bit more cautious on those dips where you might lack the ground clearance you'd have in something like a Jeep. So up here, there's a really severe rutted section. So let's check out how this CX-50 does on that. Okay, not especially challenging, but we seem to have enough ground clearance here to get through this without any issues. Though I do really wish there was a skid plate underneath us, just in case. 
All right, so there is one other challenging section up here, which I think we should check out. I was able to tackle it with the Subaru Crosstrek Wilderness. I also was able to get up it with the Honda Passport Trail Sport. So I would hope that this Mazda CX-50 could make it up it as well. Okay, so we're gonna try this hill right here, which is a bit more challenging. It doesn't look that bad on camera, but it's a very steep drop followed by a very steep incline. And keep in mind that the approach and departure angles here are acceptable, but maybe not the best for this type of thing. But let's try it and see if we can make it. All right, we made it down to the bottom without scraping. So let's see if we can make it back out. Three, two, one, go. <laughs> We're doing it. Oh my goodness. <laughs> oh, we just powered up that hill. We just powered up it. That was fun. Like I said, that's not incredibly challenging. A Jeep could do that in its sleep. Still a lot more difficult than you're likely to see on your way to a campground. Okay, so let's make our way back down. Now we don't have any fancy hill descent control like the Subaru Wilderness packages offer, but maybe we don't need all of that fancy trickery. Let's find out. Three, two, one, go. Wow, yeah, this is really steep. We're doing it. I got wheels in the air like I just don't care. But we're making it down. Oh my gosh, this is really steep. All right, we've made it down to the bottom. I'm gonna take this a little bit slow so I don't scrape. And I'm gonna power my way out of this ditch. <laughs> there we go. That was pretty awesome. Let's try that one more time because it was just so much fun. I love spending time out here in this dirt playground. We made it up once. I don't see any reason why we wouldn't be able to make it up again. I'll maybe take a slightly more challenging angle this time. All right, we're down here at the bottom of this ditch. Let's power our way out. Oh yeah, okay, a little bit more challenging, but still kind of no problem for this CX-50. All right, one more time back down because I'm having a blast. All right, can I make this a little bit more challenging? Maybe if I go a little bit more off to the left. <laughs> That's a lot more steep. Sliding a little bit. Got, I think I have two wheels in the air at the moment. All right, there we go. I have to keep in mind that this has a torsion beam rear suspension. It's not really the best for this kind of stuff, but it's working out just fine. All right, that was a lot of fun. So I'm a big fan of trying to make all of my driving experiences as enjoyable as possible. I actively go out of my way to avoid driving in the city or congested suburbs or really any place where driving is a chore. So when I do drive, I'd much rather do something like I'm doing right now, hitting a dirt trail like this, something that's actually enjoyable. A lot of times driving sucks, especially when you're commuting because there's just so many cars on the road. And I think that's where the marketing of this CX-50 comes in. Vehicles like this are marketed with images of people speeding down dirt trails, fording streams or hauling kayaks, camping in the wilderness. And car companies are well aware that most vehicle purchases are not rational. Far from it, they're highly emotional purchases. And they're often based on our subconscious convincing us that buying a particular product will help us become the person we want to be. And most vehicles like this stay on the pavement most of the time, but it's that slight small chance that you could take this off road that shines brightly in our monkey brains. The idea that an SUV like this will somehow magically allow us to take our family camping on a regular basis. And people often buy vehicles for edge cases. We often buy far more capability than what we'll actually use on a regular basis. But if you make a conscious effort to change your driving habits, a vehicle like this Meridian Edition could actually enable us to spend more time doing things with vehicles that are actually fun. And maybe we try to spend less time in vehicles doing things that are tedious and boring. And if you're not willing to go out of your way to avoid pavement, maybe just don't bother with this Meridian Edition. Just get a base CX-50 or a CX-5. They'll be better suited to what you're likely to encounter each day. But if you do actually want a constant reminder that you should get out of your traffic-filled suburb, the CX-50 Meridian Edition would be a pretty great vehicle to do that. Is it the most capable vehicle I've ever driven down this road? No, far from it. But it's still a ton of fun on pavement, it's a ton of fun off pavement, and it gives you just enough capability to tackle some fun off-road challenges.
Okay, let's talk price. This CX-50 Meridian Edition with the optional Zircon sand paint and the Apex package comes to 43,860. That's getting up there for a compact SUV, but it's significantly less than the average new car price of around 50 grand. If you're looking at this Meridian Edition, you're probably also considering a Subaru Outback or a Subaru Outback Wilderness. While those are the OGs when it comes to giving you off-road confidence in an approachable package, I think this Mazda is actually a slightly nicer car and will give you a better better driving experience everywhere aside from hanging off of the edge of a steep rocky cliff. This Turbo Meridian Edition will probably allow you to get further off into the wilderness than many other vehicles, but without better ground clearance and a skid plate, you probably won't tackle anything that would risk scratching up this pretty paint. But from the factory, this is a decently capable machine that's more fun to drive on pavement than an Outback, it's prettier than an Outback, and it has a much nicer interior than an Outback. But when it comes down to it, if you want serious off-road capability, you're probably still better off with an Outback Wilderness. But if you just need a bit more confidence to tackle some rough roads here and there, this CX-50 Meridian Edition will likely provide it. And let's be honest, Mazda knows that most vehicles will be on the pavement 98% of the time, so it seems like the amount of off-road readiness Mazda provided here is perfectly spot on. So what do you think of this rugged Mazda? Let me know in the comments below. If you like this video and you wanna see more like it, please consider subscribing and hitting that bell icon. If you wanna help support the channel, please buy a Hello Road t-shirt at helloroad.tv shop. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you're well and I'll see you soon.